not a seat to be had. It's filled to capacity inside Hunt Arena. We come to you from River Falls, Wisconsin, the national championship game upon us as we wrap up the 2024 NCAA Division III Women's Ice Hockey Championship. The final is set. It's the number one ranked undefeated host River Falls Falcons against the 14th ranked 23-7-1 Elmira College Soaring Eagles. Welcome to our coverage on NCAA.com alongside Alex Westad. My name is Matt Mendel. Look at how we got to this championship Sunday as the Falcons able to come from behind to knock off the Adrian College Bulldogs. Elmira with a third period goal to knock off Middlebury. You couldn't start out this championship weekend any better than the two games that we got on Friday. Packed capacity crowd. And for the first time ever, River Falls a chance to clinch their first ever national championship here on home ice. But they'll have to go through on a familiar opponent to be able to do so. Falcons come out with Megan Goodrow, Maddie McCallens, Kenzie Dunn, the forwards, McKenna Ori, and Allison Carruthers on defense. We're underway on this championship Sunday. As for the Soaring Eagles, they come out with MK Boyle, Sophie Campo, Mackenzie Smith, the three forwards. Maddie Morton along with Mandy McCarrick on defense. As mentioned, Elmira coming off a victory against Middlebury, scoring a goal 15-34 to that semi on Friday. A goal that was scored by Claire Meter off a great setup that came from Erica Galiniak. But the story of that semifinal was the play of Chloe Bobian between the pipes. And I think for Chloe Bobian, she had such a great game on Friday in the afternoon session because she had to. Middlebury came out so strong in that opening contest and everything that the Panthers were sending her way, Bobian had an answer for. The Falcons are going to do the same th thing here again where Elmira needs to have a great start like they did in the second and the third period to be able to keep the foot on the gas and keep the pressure on Wisconsin River Falls. For, if you're Elmira, you have no pressure whatsoever. Obviously, you want to win a championship, but the pressure's on the home team here to win the championship and cap off the undefeated season. Claire Meter at the blue line for Elmira. Sent off the back wall. That was off the stick of Lexi Hoffman, one of the captains of this Elmira squad. A third-team all-conference selection after being a third-team all-conference performer last season as well. Looking out in front, off the touch with Claire Meter, a second-team all-conference selection. On that far wall, sent off the back wall on the Soaring Eagles end of the ice. It was tapped over by Bobian. In that performance on Friday, it will come through with 31 saves, 16 of which came in the opening 20 minutes. Up the left wing, flies over the head of Holly Riva. Up that right side. Deflected off the stick with MK Boyle. Now looking through center off the backhand with Erica Kaliniak. Through center, the Falcons recover up this right side. Ahead goes Bailey Olsen. She came through with the game winner to complete the comeback on Friday versus Adrian. The Olsen game winner came 18-10 into the third. That came after the Falcons were down 2-1 to one after 2. On well, a great comeback. Great teams have the ability to do that, especially in the third period. Talked with some people in town here before that game was over. That's a great check there. If it was legal in women's ice hockey, that would be a perfect check to have. But the arm of the referee stays down. That was Lugie. Shot taken by Caitlin Ron, but Lugie able to knock Olsen off the puck. Falcons keeping the Soaring Eagles end of the ice. And I think that's what the officiating crew here today has to be. They have to be a game manager. They can't have an impact on the game itself. But if you're River Falls, you want that call to go your way just because of the physicality nature that was played there as offsides is what's called here. Because you still want to know that as we take a look at this check here again, she goes into it. The, well, I guess you'd go either way with that. Both players kind of lower their shoulder into each other. It's the River Falls skater that goes down. But you still want to have that consistency set early. What is a penalty? What's not? Well, now the door's open to a little more physicality. Referees are Will O'Malley and Tasha Adams. The two lines people, Joe Bedick, along with Sarah Buckner. And a great look there for the Falcons. Trying to strike early on. But Bowlby in. We're going to pick up where she left off on Friday. Off balance there for McCallens. She comes kicking across the near side. Maddie McCallens has scored five goals over the last five games, including what was the game tying goal. 5.43 into the third. Across that blue line went Megan Goodrow. Now back through center. Elmira will play it back. 
And for the Soaring Eagles, the pass here from Maddie Morton, the first team All-American honoree. Play to the far side by McKenna Ori, a first team All-WIC selection for a second consecutive year. In that corner with Aubrey Nelvin. Out it comes, bounces by the stick, Alexi Hoffman of the Falcons. Skate out with it. That was dumped head on the chase now with Madison Laverne. She was able to get the scoring started for the Falcons on Friday, 15-47. The end of the first, it came eight seconds after Adrian was able to take the initial lead. And it goes back to respond on just how strong this River Falls team is, being able to respond when facing adversity. They haven't much in a season where they've been perfect, but here in this postseason, in this semifinal, and now today in this final, you have to be able to respond when things aren't going your way. Well, right now, all Falcons on the attacking side. Shots already 3-0 Wisconsin River Falls. Puck got away there from Allison Carruthers. Control here by the Soaring Eagles. Look up this left wing. Long pass. Speed here with Mackenzie Schmidt off the back wall. Schmidt toward the corner. Control here by River Falls. Now take it away. Off the center, he passed and was set behind Claire Meter, and that's where Meter's been effective so far. She kind of waits back near the blue line and slowly but surely starts to sneak in toward the crease. And I like the decision of Meter to test that out early on in this contest. She did in the third period. That led to that goal. There's a look from Madison Katerlich. You can just tell this crowd's ready to erupt even more, so they have been ready to go. They were lined up well outside. Hunt Arena a couple hours before the gates even open. Rush into their seats prior to, and for the Falcons, you mentioned second national championship game appearance, looking for their first national championship. They were a runner-up from Plattsburgh State to Plattsburgh State, 5-1 to one back in 2016. That look coming from Emma Bradbury, was the NEHC Rookie of the Year in 2013. That's Bradbury's camped out in front for the Soaring Eagles. Slap shot for the points. Was blocked, Bradbury looking for the rebound. That slap shot taken by Maddie Morton. Now the Falcons on the counter. We're going to skate in, in front down the slot when Kenzie Dunn. Back toward the corner for the Falcons. Trying to dump it off, but take it away instead. They have sent down ice by Lenzin. And I think that's something to watch for Elmira. They did such a great job closing out the box in the game against Middlebury on Friday. Dunn fires high. And the hope is, is that they can continue to do so again for Elmira, where each of the goals that really mattered for River Falls, obviously all goals matter, but the first and the third goal were scored from sharp scoring angles where the goaltender was off the post. And Elmira, we saw that in game one on Friday, that they have the ability to defend the post really well and not allow players into that defensive house. Put off the left wing boards by Braylon Sathers. Up this near side, Nelvin fires. And a great look up this right side for River Falls. Aubrey Nelvin with 12 goals, 18 assists, with an all counts on mention. And a takeaway for McKenna Ori. Put up the right wing, Nelvin dumps it in. Off the back wall, control here by the Soaring Eagle. Drag along the near side. On the back skate from Ori. Sent in by Galiniak on this near side. Off the battle, dislodged by Ellie Bryce. Looking for the wraparound, nothing there. Great setup there defensively for River Falls, which includes Laverne. On this near side for Elmira is Holly Riva. Now the takeaway. And tracked down, down by Bailey Olsen. Back in the corner, Olsen. Press for the backside for Riva. Also out there is Ellie Bryce. Olsen gets back up, and the Soaring Eagles control the puck. Skating up his left wing. Back through neutral. Meter. Gloved here by Jordan O'Connor, the starting netminder for the Falcons. And we talked about the strength, certainly, that Elmira has on the defensive side. This is a great rush by Meter as well. She encounters three of the River Falls Falcons on her way into the zone, and she keeps possession all the time. And again, the physicality of Elmira, you see she has the ground, she's set up, she tries to go in there. You could argue that collision should have been called for a penalty, but after that first one wasn't, the precedent was set. And I think we're going to see, again, the physicality rampant all afternoon. Chance there on this near side for Elena Toole. One of the captains, she has scored nine goals with six assists. Her last goal coming back on the 17th of February against Plymouth State. Falcons up the left wing. 
That was knocked off the stick of Goodrow. Back near the blue line, offside. Whistle here against the Falcons. Elmira, they were outshot against Middlebury on Friday. 31-20. In fact, they've been outshot in their last two games after they had outshot their first 20, 29 opponents, 30 opponents. So they played out their 32nd game that a program record. Well, and I think, too, you look at that stat in which Elmira was outshot on Friday afternoon. Well, a lot of that was just because of the first period. They played better and were more even with Middlebury in the second and third period. So they're coming out strong here. They're not being outshot as bad early on here in the first part of this first period. But they got to start turning that offense to defense as they've been able to do so far very well. Taking out a Falcons team that was able to outshoot Adrian 45-24 to in the average. Roughly 46 shots a game. Heck of an offense that been producing over five goals a game, but they've been limited over the last three. In fact, the last three games have all been set up by a single goal apiece. We have offside here against Alex Punky and the Falcons. That's one of the storylines, too, and I feel like we talk about it a lot. You look at Chloe Bobian. She's part of a, a defense, goaltending tandem with Leone Kuberger that combined for a nation-best 14 shutouts. Bobby in with six shutouts. In fact, she's won her last six consecutive appearances. Trying to slow down a Falcon offense that is tied for first in the nation with 156 total goals. Well, on a fifth-year goaltender is Bobby in. Transferred from Plattsburgh State, a great program in their own right. Not to start at the beginning of the year, but proved every reason why she is now. Revo will pass it off to Hoffman. On the back, can't take it away. Campo gets back. Revo trying to take it away and will for Elmira. Looking back in front. There's a shot for Capital. It's blocked. Bryce. On an angle back in as she gets around Katie Manning. Looking out in front where Holly Ecker's in position, but that puck's going to slide down ice. The back after it for the Falcons, Caitlin Rod. Up the left side. Trying to get across the blue line and off the collision. That was Katie Manning along with Caitlin Ron, who was down for the Falcons. We have a stop pitch here in point nearly halfway through this first as Caitlin Ron is shook up. Cross that blue line and a collision there with Katie Manning, who was part of the Conference All Tournament team as Elmira brought home the New England Hockey Conference Championship. So here's another look at it. And you see Manning goes right to her. She's positioned to attempt to play the puck there, but plays the body instead. It, it just goes to show this first 10 minutes of this game where Elmira's game plan has been to be physical on these skilled players and the skilled forwards for Wisconsin River Falls. And you heard the boos here at Hunt Arena. I mean, really, if it's not for that first check setting the precedent of the physicality is okay, well, then you might get a penalty there. Now, you kind of have to let that one go. So the Falcons looking to slow down. Uh, gets sped back up. It's the Eagles trying to slow down the Falcons with that physicality. Right now, shots are even at four apiece. And we continue on with this battle of the birds for a national championship. Elmira looking for it would be their fourth national championship with a win. Looking for the rebound. Catterlick after that last shot for Kennedy Bielenberg. Howarth, a freshman from Rochester, Minnesota. Angling with Brooke Lemke. Leaves it down low. Comes out to the near side. Back at the point, you have Bielenberg Howarth. The soaring Eagles will go far side and put off the right wing boards. They look down, ice going to be picked off looking for Holly Reva. Battle at center. Comes to the near side. Kaylee Nickham. A sophomore from Minnesota. A couple of goals for us in her stat line. Now up to the far side by McCollins. You have Carruthers on this near side, but here come the Falcons again on the backhand attempt involving Kenzie Dunn. Wobbly puck back to center. But this is a very effective line for the Falcons, but again, but every line has been effective. They have seen 
22 players record points this season. Blocked was Anna Lugi. Not clear yet. Hoffman fires. Lugi plays it back out to the point. Clap shot was blocked. Goodrow skates in, save made, and corralled by Bobian. So a block for Megan Goodrow, able to take it down ice. Bobian able to make the save. And it's the first initial block by Carruthers in the zone that's creating this rush the other way for Goodrow. She has a great angle, fires it low, looking five hole on Bobian, but to her credit, she drops down low enough, reads it well, is able to kick out a short rebound and then reach for it herself to make the save. Nicely done by both skater and goaltender. You see in the background, Bree Conger trying to do all she could on the dive to try to slow down. Megan Goodrow. Goodrow has been able to score goals in 14 games this season. I've seen her production hover around the 17 to 19 goal here in the last couple of years. Up that left side, a look for Schmidt. Over comes Elena Toole. Up the right side with Nelvin. It's a cross center, we'll send it ahead. After it for Elmira, Maddie McCarrick, also part of the Conference All Tournament team. A conference won by the Soaring Eagles with wins against Plymouth State, William Smith, and Southern Maine. Southern Maine, a team that upset number one Norwich in the semis of the NEHC tournament. Off the right wing boards. Goes right back for the Elmira zone, but sent back to center. And brought in here by Erica Galiniak. Able to keep it in the zone. Comes free towards center. Out back toward the blue line, gathered by the Falcons. Opportunity here off the slap shot that was taken by Kennedy Bielenberg Howarth. Goes right back to center. See McCallens. Talked about this quite a bit on Friday, but. What a year she's been able to put together as she was named the Laura Hurd National Player of the Year as of Thursday. Becoming the third different Falcon to be named the National Player of the Year, joining Callie Hoff, who was the National Player of the Year in 2022, and then Danny Sibley in 2017. Well, it's tough certainly to earn that honor, but of all the players that were deserving, none more so than her. You take a look at the body of work that she had this season. Got to give her credit where credit's due and well earned on that award. 33 goals, tops in the entire nation. On top of the fact she's plenty, it says get her. I set a single season program record for goals, surpassing her old mark at 28 from last year. Cover up here for Bobby in. A look with McKenna Ori. He is out there along with McCallens as we speak for River Falls with 6-10 left here in this opening period. Shots are at 7-5 in favor of the Falcons. Face off draw win straight back to the point looking high blocker side. We talked about where Bobian is a shorter goaltender. You want to try that blocker side. It's more difficult save for a goaltender to make rather than having the glove. But Bobian as she's been now through almost four periods. She's been perfect. Schmidt. Over on the four check Sophie Capo. Comes out to River Falls. They have a two on two as McCallens will pass it off. Done. Now McCallens turning. Done. Far side, Ori. Off the back wall. Tool. Applying pressure for Elmira. Here, five and a half to go here in the first. But an opportunity there for the Falcons. They had a two on two, but. Able to connect on the give and go with McCallens along with Kenzie Dunn. Nelvin fires, sent away by Bobian. And the soaring Eagles again with Bree Conger. Oh, and a trip up, trying to play it out to the right side. Held in. Hunky goes high off the juggle. It's brought in by Bobian. I think the first conversation that Joe Cranston's going to have with the officiating crew here today at this intermission break is a question about the physicality. You see it a little bit there on the trip. 
but as it goes up high in the glove there, Bobian puts some great hand-eye coordination to hold on. But you've seen it and heard it a couple of times now where students and people in the stands here are reacting to collisions, plays on the boards, things of that nature. And again, it all goes back to that precedent that was set early on this game where you're going to allow it just a little bit more, but how much is too much? Ecker shot brought down. Nearly taken away by Catherine Bellamy. We'll send it right back to the Elmira zone. Another glove save for Bobian, who, of course, had the season-high 43 save performance against Amherst in the quarterfinal victory. A 2-1 overtime result for the Soaring Eagles. Nice shot there from the blue line entering the zone. It's another testament to how well Elmira's defense has been, where they're not giving River Falls much, if anything, to be able to break their way into the slot. The best chance they had, they couldn't get the shot off because the defender's stick was right there. Lenzen looking to set it across, had it denied. Bradbury, Lenzen, Bradbury getting tangled, gets back up for the Soaring Eagles. McCarrick on the back skate. On the near side with Bell. Right back to the Elmira zone. On this near side with Holly Eckers, an all countable we'll mention after also in the past being a three time first team all WIC honoree. You get to see more of that physicality with a Falcon going down. Eckers. And again, if you're the Soaring Eagles, why change anything? Obviously, it's, it's, it's been legal here in this first period. Well, it's been legal and it's been working because even to the physicality, you get into the mind of a player where you're just that little more hesitant about going into the gritty areas, skating with the puck. And the best way to beat physicality, speed moving that puck. Where once you get that puck moved around, you get the physicality that's minimized because, well, then all of a sudden you have control and you have a high danger look because of players being moved around. Puck sent the round to the near side with Ellie Bryce. Olsen, off the end boards, gathered by the Soaring Eagles. There's some personnel changes here for the Falcons. O'Connor is going to come up with a save, off the look by Lexi Hoffman. And that mental game for Elmira working on the attacking side as well. Great rush into the attacking zone here. It's carried in by Hoffman. She shoots from a long way out, but look how she goes to follow her rebound. Goes right to the goaltender, immediately in the vicinity of Jordan O'Connor, and now a face-off in River Falls' defensive zone. Lexi Hoffman, who's been quite the facilitator as a late come to River Falls, and recorded assists for over the last five games, including two against Cortland in the opening round of the NCAA tournament, this being the 18th NCAA tournament appearance for Elmira. That backhand, but again a save made for Bobian. But that came off the look with Kenzie Dunn. Two on two rush into the zone. Then on the first passing attempt, try to go for the backhand. Bobian will make that save 10 times out of 10. Where again it was a good rush there. They were able to create some separation because of the aggressiveness of Elmira. Just couldn't drift that two-on-two two to be more center to try to get that redirection or that extra pass to get a high-quality look. Bobby in again from the point. Ori's had a couple of good looks here in this first period. And for Ori, a lot of the looks that she's had have been off the face-off draws. Clean win right back to her. She just fires it right on and starts shooting low, shoot for a rebound, try to kick something out and trust your forwards to go to work as they have all season. An offensively minded defenseman for River Falls. She has, she has seen her offensive totals improve for that last year. Up in goals, and she has gone plus eight in the assist category for that last season. But behind the cage, reaching in Anna Lugi, part of the Conference All Rookie team in the New England Hockey Conference. Chasing after it, get Bradbury. The Falcons will. Start the trek the other way. Nifty move, Ori fires. Save made here by Bobian. But end to end action, that for McKenna Ori. Well, the sophomore from Alexandria, again, you talk about beating physicality, you do so with speed, and you do so with keeping your feet moving. Sharp angle look, but still able to get around five Eagles for Elmira, creating a great look and a good opportunity that if you're not at least going to get a good scoring opportunity, at least you get the offensive zone draw to keep the pressure on Elmira in their end. At one point, shots were at 4-4. Four, four. Following a quick start for the Falcons, that puck bounced free in the crease. 
Shots now at 13 to 6 in favor of the home team. Falcons have outshot them now 8 to 1 in the last about eight minutes of game time. You can feel that shift with the ice too, where it's shifting down more towards the Elmira end. Eagles are getting rushes the other way, as again, the faceoffs have been a big key here where they just send it in. River Falls is starting to match the physicality with Elmira too. They're playing within what the officials are calling, but they're winning the faceoffs and doing damage with them. And eventually, does that attrition start to set in for Elmira? Well, we still got two periods to find out. Falcons awfully go to the faceoff against Adrian on Friday. 40 for 58. Typically on the year, the Falcons are around 63% that face-off winning percentage. It's right about where they are right now. 11 to 5 face-offs in favor of River Falls as of this moment. Knocked back by Olsen, but fouled by Tool. Left at center. Olsen got a touch. Schmidt. Give it right back. Olsen across the blue line. Fires. Bobian got a piece of it. In the corner for a Galiniak. Schmidt with a slash that she got away with in the defensive zone of River Falls that wasn't called there. So, again, the officials are not going to make the call unless they absolutely have to, it appears, after this first period. After being dumped in by McCarrick, a touch-up by O'Connor, given to Eckers. Plays up the left wing. McCallins moves in. All kinds of traffic. Galiniak on the clearance. And slaps her right back into the zone by Caitlin Ron, who was back out there after she was shook up earlier in this first period. Kept in by Falcon for a moment. Back up there right side with Galiniak. Holly Riva offside against Elmira. And that's a great play by Ori, recognizing where that puck is, the amount of time that's left. She loses a possession of it as she's going back. She just drops down to block the shot from going into the zone, even allowing the dumping to happen in the zone. And a great play by Ari for River Falls. What a job that guy has done. Greg Haney in his first season as the head coach of the Soaring Eagles. Their third head coach in three years. He spent the last three years at SUNY Potsdam. But he credits the leadership, the seniors, the grass students on this team that have helped with that smooth transition. But the chemistry, the leadership, that's been a big part of why this team has had the success they have had. McCollins... Offside against the Falcons. And I think that as time continues to wind down here in period number one, the first period here in this game is comparable to what they did against Middlebury, where they were outshot almost 2-1 to one in that game against Middlebury. They're almost outshot 2-1 to one now here against River Falls. It's just whether that storm of the first period and then with the long change, start to see where you can take advantage of. Yeah, the first period was 16-7 Middlebury. Right now it's 14-6 River Falls in this first period. Bring it back up. Caitlin Ron again right there for that physicality. McCarrick gets back. Hunky chasing after it. Tough angle. Bobby and sends it away. And knocked out of the zone by Sophie Campo as the first period comes to a close. But I know something that you talked about quite a bit on Friday that, that, that rings true to some degree here in this first period. It is quantity versus quality when you look at shots. And I think that for River Falls and Elmira both, they were both getting quality. But the quantity started to favor River Falls here again. That last rush the Falcons had into the zone to end this first period, that's the kind of enter the zone, shoot low, look for the rebound. Bobian kicks it out, but there's nobody there to finish it off. If River Falls wants to try to pull ahead, they're going to need to have somebody that drifts down in the middle looking to crash in and finish off that rebound. Otherwise, we might be scoreless for quite some time. Alex Hunky with that last look, the second team All-American, but it's been Chloe Bobian once again riding to the occasion with a 15 save opening period. We are scoreless after 20 in this national championship game to determine the 2024 Division 3 Women's Ice Hockey National Champion. Stay tuned. Second period is coming up on NCAA.com. No score after 20 minutes of play here in River Falls, Wisconsin, alongside Alex Westad. My name is Matt Mendel, a national champion to be crowned as we wrap up the 2024 NCAA Division III Women's Ice Hockey Championship. And 
Again, the first period belonging to Chloe Bobby and company coming through with a total of 15 saves. It's exactly what we expected the game to be. River Falls was going to have a great push in the opening period. They did exactly that. The question for Elmira was, was the Eagles going to be able to withstand that opening storm from the Falcons? They were able to do so, and we saw on Friday Elmira started to take advantage and take that momentum back in period two and three against Middlebury. River Falls a tougher test, certainly a better team as well. We'll see what the Eagles can do here this time around. McCallens and Campo on the faceoff. River Falls won 12 of 19 first period faceoffs to get officially shot for at 15-6 in favor of the Falcons. And away we go in period number two. McCallens across the blue line, looking near side, just double fire. Just missed. And Goodrow on the left wing. And McCallens. Five goals over the last five games. You look over the course of a 128 career games, she has scored 89 times. And certainly an effective skater as well. When you're scoring at that proficiency in that clip, no matter the conference, no matter who you're playing with or for, it's impressive to say the very least. Sent in by McCallens in that first period. McKenna Ori led the way with four shots taken for the Falcons. Off the stick of Lugie. Neither team penalized despite the physicality of that first period. But then again, these are two teams that don't often beat themselves with penalties. Got a cover up here for Bobby in. So the Falcons coming in looking for their first ever national championship, looking to become the eighth different school to win a Division III women's hockey national title. Elmira, their eighth national championship game appearance, their first since 2018. Looking for their fourth title, their first since knocking off Middlebury 1-0 up at UW-Superior in 2013. And in those opportunities where Elmira has had chances to play for a championship game, they've had to play River Falls. Elmira won the first three head-to-head -head against River Falls all in this championship semifinal kind of format. This is the first time these two have played each other in a championship game. Going to strike here. A look. Bradbury along with Lenzen have been effective for the Soaring Eagles. Hunky going to drag it in. Knocked away off the near wall for Rod. Playing it down low for the Falcons. You mentioned the semifinal history between these two teams with the Eagles taking three out of the four, but the most recent coming to 2016. High shot off glass for Olsen. Three out of the four previous head-to-heads, all of a sudden by a single goal. That 2016 meeting was an overtime winner for the Falcons to advance to their first and prior to today only national championship game appearance. Down went Riva. Off the left wing boards. That was swung in by Katerlik. Back behind the Elmira Cage. Sent to the outside by Maddie Morton. For the first team all-conference selection for a second consecutive year, four-time all-conference performer as Bobian seals off that far side. Looking for a wraparound. Puck came free. Riva comes up with it for the soaring Eagles. She goes down and takes a Falcon with her. As they play on, Meter angles in. Knocked off her stick. Olsen finds it. Flicks it ahead. Brought in here by Goodrow. Backhands it. Goodrow blocked by Bobby in. We're going to cross the way. Sathers. Still fire. That goes wide to the Bobby in glove. Along the end boards with Tool. Up the right side. We're going to go back to Tool. Disrupted by McCollins. Into the slot area. Got away from Goodrow. That got redirected by Bobby in. Ori with a shot, looking for the rebound. McCallens with a cover up for Bobby as McCallens gets knocked down and a penalty coming up here against the Soaring Eagles. And I think that one you have to call. You can give away some ground one way or the other during the course of play, but once that whistle blows, you got to know better than to be a part of it. River Falls makes a great adjustment there. They go right to the crease. They go right to that area looking for the rebound. And just the persistence of staying in that area for McCallens draws the penalty, and now the Elmira... Golden Eagles will have to go to the penalty kill. 
3.26, the time of the goal here in the second period. In the box for the Soaring Eagles, Mandy McCarrick. There's an argument going on with Matty Morton and the officiating crew here. Again, it's after the whistle. And for the Soaring Eagles, you have to know that once that whistle blows, you have to stop the physicality. Granted, they were very well defending on the penalty kill on Friday. They did so one for six against Amherst as well back in the round that got them here. And so how do you trust your penalty kill to be able to do that job again? Cross checking the call here against McCarrick. The Falcons have not scored a power play over the last three. And Laverne in front. Overall though, River Falls comes in with a 33 power play percentage. First in the nation, second in the nation with 31 power play goals. And certainly that's something that has boded well for them this year. Granted, the WIAC, a lot of those power play goals came against Superior, Northland, you know, those kind of schools that are down at the bottom of the WIAC, but you're still able to score the goals, and it's important to be able to do so. We'll see what's on tap here on this rush. There's McCallum, she has scored eight power play goals. This is where Ori has been effective. You have Aubrey Nelvin out there. Nelvin, out of the zone. Ori finds it, but he fell because he get back onside. Hunky out there as well. She has come through with six power play goals. Got away from Ori and a clearance for Elmira. Goes down ice. Met halfway by O'Connor left here for Nelvin. Power play is 50 seconds remaining. Great speed. Nelvin lost her handle. They will go after it on the backhand pass to the outside. Real falls. We're going to set up. Left there in front on the turn. Shot goes wide for Goodrow. Off the pass from Hunky. Power play 30 seconds remaining. Bobby in off the look by McCollins. Falling a hit into the boards on this near side. Ori fires. Traffic in front. Delayed penalty coming up here against Elmira. Off the touch up. That to be assessed. 5-13 into the second period. So for only 13 seconds, we'll get five on three hockey. And this is not a penalty that you want to take if you're Elmira. Where all of a sudden that... That method changes, and you see a separation wow. between the player for River Falls on the boards and Nelvin, and you see that separation for that check that's delivered. Again, that boarding more so the call. Now the conversation of is it a two or a five? And that's something to consider here, too, because of the separation, because of the board. We have River Falls fans shouting for five, and you could go either way on this one way or the other. But if it is the five, you're going for a team that had given opportunities up in Elmira but wasn't able to break on the penalty kill. Well, now a five on three. Well, that might be an opportunity to break. And they will review the penalty. It certainly did not look good on replay. And I think that that's something, again, here in this, this championship weekend, you have the ability to review it. The officials that here are from Division I schools that have used the replay as well. Let's take one last look at it there. And I think it's tough to tell with the fans that are standing sure. up to see that clearly. This will be a much better view. And again, you see the collision there. She loses the footing and goes into the board almost face first. Absolutely a penalty. But I think on that second review, I think it's a two-minute variety and not a five because I don't think that the seriousness of the injury is there. And so I would go with the two here if I'm the officiating crew. But again, there's a reason why I'm in the stands with you and not on the ice. It certainly, from that second angle, looked bad with, with Aubrey Nelvin flying into the wall. Off the hit taken by Holly Riva. There's still 13 seconds left on the prior penalty against Maddie McCarrick. And you get the feeling here too, Matt, that if one goes in, the floodgates open. It's a power play unit in River Falls that scored three goals in a game three times this season, once at Augsburg, once here at home to Adrian, the team they knocked off on Friday, and then as well against Concordia College of Moorhead. All three non-conference opponents, or the non-conference opponent here, you're hoping for that five if you're River Falls. See Joe Cranston, the head coach for the Falcons, back for his 25th season. He has been here since day one of the program. Even before that, he was a 1990 River Falls grad. But the National Coach of the Year after being a three-time runner up for the National Coach of the Year honor. And again, it's it's tough to tell which way it goes in terms of the two or the five there. 
You could go either way. The head contact isn't a great look, but it's a tough conversation now for Will O'Malley and Tasha Adams looking at the replay where they have to make a decision on this. And one way or another, someone's going to be mad at you. Whether it's a two-minute variety or the five, we'll find out. But the one thing that Elmira did so well in that opening period was they kept this crowd quiet. They're giving them that energy back here in River Falls where this crowd is becoming a factor once again. And if it's a five-minute variety here, oh boy, watch out. Biggest penalty kill of the season for Elmira. And again, it's going to be five on three for at least the next 13 seconds. Look there at Alex Hunky on the ice with McKenna Ori, who's put awfully well. And no different so far through a period plus. She won the WIC New Cover of the Year last year. That's been an All-American back-to-back year. Second team last year, first team this year. And reading the lips of the official, I think it's five-minute major in a game misconduct that's going to be assessed here, if I read it correctly. Because I saw the five-minute major on the lips of the official, but then I also saw the, the, um, the throat-cutting motion, almost to imply that she might be done for the day. We'll see officially what's announced here in River Falls. And that goes against Emily Lenzen. Lenzen... There for Elmira, 29, not 20. So Lenzen, given the five minutes. And again, it could go either way there. Certainly with the, the name of player safety, you want to go with the five there, be on the side of caution there. But it goes contradictory to what they called in the first period where you saw collisions like that, and now all of a sudden, you're Elmira. You're sitting there wondering, well, why didn't we get that call? We didn't get called on that in the first period. Well, major power play time now for the Falcons. As Bobby in on the save, check from behind the call. The five-minute major here against Lenzen. It was not announced, though, there was a game misconduct tacked on, so it appears she will stay active in this game. And I imagine that's where Will O'Malley, when he did that throat-cutting motion, as they're now five on four, when they did that cut throat-cutting motion, it was just a signal, it's five minutes and that's it. Hearing the check from behind call, absolutely, I agree. Five-minute major then for sure. Nelman if it was a boarding, maybe not. Knocked away, you mentioned it, McCarrick out of the box, so it's five on four for that four and a half minutes, unless the Falcons score. Well, that's the best part about the major power play. It keeps rolling until that clock expires. And so a big opportunity here in this game for River Falls. Momentum changing if Elmira can kill it. McCallens against Bradbury. Playing it down low. Hunky. That shot goes wide for Goodrow. After Hunky had the fuck dog, Bobby in. Get her stick tra trap for a second, Lexi Hoffman. Hunky. McCallens fires, tough angle. As the Falcons look for the rebound, brought in here by Ori. On the near wall. Nelvin, Ori, and a clearance for the Soaring Eagles with 3.35 left here in this five-minute major. Here's Jordan O'Connor, a second-team All-American. Comes in 22-0 and 0 with seven shutouts and a 1.10 goals against average. Through center with Eckers. Into the Elmira zone. Eckers skates in. Lost her handle. Down she goes. Knocked away before the puck can be played in front by Ellie Bruce. Uh, Bryce now back along the near side with Ron. Back out to the point. Caitlin Ron gives it a ride. Redirected by Bobian. Olsen. Here's Bryce. Missed on the hook up in front with Katerlick. Ron. And held in by Ron, going back right side. Played down low by Eckers. Looking in front, trying to deflect it. Catalyst positioned. 2.33 to go here in the power play for River Falls. They've had the first two now in this championship game. We near eight minutes gone by in this scoreless second period. Olsen. Sends it ahead. Back in that far side with McCarrick. 
Another clearance here for the Soaring Eagles, but now stop to play first. That one out of play. A faceoff coming up with exactly 12 minutes left here in the second. Yeah, the puck hit a stick in the River Falls bench on the clearance by Elmira. That's why the puck goes back into the Elmira defensive zone. And with 2.14 left on this power play, this major power play, you have to admire what Elmira's done. They keep sticks in the lanes, and while River Falls has gotten space in the middle, they've done a great job of closing it off and limiting those opportunities by just keeping sticks in passing lanes. Well done by the Eagles. McCallage fires, blocked. That was blocked off the back side of Claire Meter. Ori on the pass up their right side. McCollins passing it down low, getting the pass back in that right circle. McCollins, Hunky, back out to McCollins. Into the corner she goes. Hunky plays the puck for the Falcons. Hunky fires. There goes wide rebound here for Nelvin. Hunky, Nelvin fires. Put back, block, Bobian blocks, good draw. Oh, what a save for Chloe Bobian. Ori skates in, fires, scores! It's a power play goal for McKenna Ori. the time of the goal. And the Falcons have a 1-0 lead. Bobian with a great job on those first saves, but then separation and space. What the River Falls Falcons needed to do, and she lifts it high to Zori. Great rush right to the top of the net. Bobian has it pretty dang well, but that blocker high side, a goaltender's weakness, especially for the one the size of Bobian, and as a result, power play goal, 1-0 Falcons. McKenna Ori, her 13th goal. It's her third power play goal. And still 66 seconds left on the major against Emily Lenzit. And that's where, again, having that man advantage, you have that extra time and space. The physicality of Elmira in that situation could have backfired because of the extra space, and it did there. Ori with a great rush, top of the dot. Eckers. They came after an incredible save by Bobian off a flurry of an attack for the Falcons, which also included a look for Goodrow. It's an unassisted goal. The power play goal put in by McKenna Ori, only a matter of time with the amount of looks she has gotten here today. Has kept the pressure on. Taken away from Olsen. And it got away from Schmidt. Olsen gets the center. Swung right back toward the Falcon end of the ice, but as a soaring eagle was skating off, it clipped a skate. Stopping play here with 31 seconds left on the Falcons. Power play 10 17 left here in the second. This will be an offsides call that was made. It was on the pass into the zone that the offsides was called, so it comes to the closest dot to where the pass happened. That was a center ice dot. River Falls, they come in a perfect 30-0. 30 victories, a new Division Three women's hockey single season wins record. Trying to cap off a perfect season. Goodrow, kept in by Ori. McCollins to Hunky. Back to five on five, fresh out of the box. Lends in after the five minute major. Played back out, but Hunky was starting to skate toward the bench in her back turn. Turned the last moment, but Elmira able to take it away. Lens and fires off the pad of O'Connor. Bradbury scores! Game tied at 1, 10-36 into the second period. The putback, Emma Bradbury, her eighth of the season. 
And a little bit of a busted play here that Elmira takes advantage of. The puck is cleared up, but not far enough out. And this shot appears to be harmless for Bradbury. It's just the third shot of the period for Elmira. Great shot through traffic. A little bit of a screen there in front, too. That's assisted by Sathers, but it ties the game up. And now how big is that penalty kill for Elmira, giving up just the one power play goal to Wisconsin River Falls? Lenzid, who was fresh out of the box, took the first shot. Picks up the assist. Here's Dunn. But as you mentioned, that comes off officially the fourth shot of the period for Elmira, 10th of the game. What a response. Looking for more. Galiniak. Now with the rebound. Far side with McCarrick. Galiniak being flanked by a couple, taken away by the Falcons. Dunn, up the right wing. McCallan skates over. McCallan has an option to the left, knocked away. And good draw on that left wing. Here's a look at Holly Riva. Through traffic, backed up by Galiniak. Had a great pass. Did Galiniak for the goal that was scored by Meter in the semifinal on Friday. Ron. Right back to the corner here for Elmira. But a big time response and as quiet as this Hunt Arena crowd after they were electric following the go ahead power play goal. And goes high and wide for Maddie Morton. Out of the ice is Tool. That bounces behind the goal. And the Falcons can't quite clear. Now they do. But Tool try to gather. And back into there by Laverne. And a stop it here and plays the puck is up. And deflected off a Falcon with 7.21 to go here in the second period. I think for both of these teams, the next three minutes of this game are going to be the most important of their season. You look at how that power play resulted for River Falls. Elmira was able to take advantage off of a kill, surrendering just the one goal on a major power play. That's a great point of victory for Elmira. And now to have this be 1-1, this next three minutes, whoever comes ahead, if both teams are able to continue the great pace of play that we've seen here over the last five, again, you just sit there and wonder who's going to be able to take advantage if they continue to play as well as they have, because both teams have played really well today. Over comes Olsen. You have Carruthers out there, near side, Ori. Behind the goal with Catterlick. Bradbury waits back along the near side. Sent up the left side. Too much on that pass, deflected off the wall. Catterlick able to get after it for River Falls. Soaring Eagles take it away. Give it right back. Going to play it out to Galiniak. It's been out there for some time. That shot goes wide. Galiniak was looking for a rebound, perhaps even a pass, but the shot was taken by Claire Meter. Play down low. Galiniak leaves it in front. Nobody there. It comes out to McCarrick with Galiniak in front. And now with Catterlick. We'll lift it ahead. And put off the back wall by McCarrick. The Soaring Eagles team, they have won six consecutive match their season best. Their third six-game win streak of the year. Has also won 12 of their last 13. They have not lost since the 10th of February. And of course, the Falcons, perfect. They have not lost since NCAA tournament quarterfinal last year on March the 11th to Gus Davis and Dolphins. McCallum sees it deflected into the corner. Sathers trying to recover. We'll send it back. The Soaring Eagles route. They will send it ahead. Bang off the near wall. Played at center. And left here for it, Morton. Meter had to take it away. Hunky goes after it, but there is Maddie Morton. The senior defenseman from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Right back towards center with Ron. That lead pass. Campo 
Schmidt on that far side. She goes down. Campbell waits back. Ankemi was Tool. Staying with it. Out there is Hoffman. Chance now with Lugie. In front of the backhand. Here Tool. Also right there is Schmidt. Lugie in the picture as well for Elmira. Hoffman gets back. Falcon skate out with it and set the head by Madison Laverne. Played behind the goal by Bobian. She has come through with 24 saves so far. She's coming after she had a perfect first period, notching 15 saves. Katerlik steered away by Bobian. Shots right now are 26 to 12 in favor of the Falcons. It was 15 to 6 after one in favor of River Falls. In front, had the one timer, but ain't a wide for Catterlick. But a second period where the action has picked up a couple of penalties against Elmira, including a five minute major against Emily Lenzen for a check from behind, leading to the eventual first goal of the game for the Falcons. But to Elmira's credit, they will come right back and respond right after Lenson was released from the box. All even at one goal apiece. And a nice little stretch there, four minutes of play in between whistles there. We talked about how each of these teams had great speed. The question was, would those extended periods of play benefit River Falls, a team that at least on paper has a little slightly more, not much more, but slightly more depth than Elmira. And again, great job weathering the storm there for the Eagles. So far, Ori, the goal scorer for the Falcons. Brad Berry has scored for the Soaring Eagles. Galiniak coming across the way. Off the River Falls takeaway. Kenzie Dunn fires. Bobby in with the save. Right there looking for the rebound. Sophie Gregory coming over to help out. Chloe Bobby in. And you know, contested angles, contested rushes into the zone. Elmira's done a great job of handling them today. River Falls continues to get them. And so as long as Elmira can match with speed and match with numbers, it bodes well for them defensively. River Falls, though, we've seen them get some odd man rushes. Their best chances, aside from that major power play, have been on the odd man rushes into the attacking zone. We'll see if they're able to generate some more here in the late stages of period two. Try to alter their direction. Elmira going back far side. Off the left wing pass that came from Maddie Morton. Dumped right back in by the Falcons. 2.40 left here in the second. Back down low with Meter. Camped out in front is Tool. Schmidt, she goes down. Took a Falcon with her. Campo. Back up is Schmidt. Yeah, Morton out there as well, and a cover up here for O'Connor as the chippiness starts to pick up. You see Capo in the face of O'Connor, quickly separated. Uh, good old fashioned stare down there between Capo and O'Connor. Elmira starting to put the pressure on, but the big thing again, physicality ramping up here, especially in the second period. Elmira looking for a penalty call to come there, and you see just how physical they are on the board. Schmidt again with the check back on reciprocation. And there it is, the old fashioned stare down between shooter and goalie. Not blinking, not flinching. Oh, what a great game. So far, 11 saves for Jordan O'Connor. Olsen. Rebound found by Bryce. Waiting back, asking for it yet. Carruthers. Carruthers will send it right back in. Off the back wall, he's soaring Eagles, backhand it to the far side. That got away from Lugie. Off the takeaway, left back. Carruther, make that Olsen right there in front. Puck goes across the, well, did it go across the goal line? Fans certainly thought it did. Boy, some looks there. Involving Olsen. Bobian trying to locate it. 
Watch this traffic in front. It, it's a great sequence that starts on the giveaway. Drop pass doesn't connect. And how about that? Again, it's defensive sticks of Elmira. And a great play by McCarrick on the far side. You see it? Oh, goodness. And the call goes in favor of Elmira here to keep this a 1-1 game. And Olsen and Bryce. Then eventually it was Hoffman making sure that puck did not go across the goal line. But I think the whistle came first. But certainly the crowd thought just maybe. Elmira knows a thing or two about those close goal line calls already here in River Falls, Wisconsin. And you can argue about the puck being over the line. What you can't argue with really is the whistle being blown or the intent to blow the whistle. You're not going to win that argument ever. Manning. Kaliniak. Going after it. Holly Riva. But icing, a rare icing whistle in this one. Coming against the Soaring Eagles. I'll mention the Falcons trying to go undefeated. Trying to join the likes of Middlebury in 2012, who went 27 0, and then Plattsburgh State was unbeaten in 2007 at 27 0 and 2. Among those that have either gone undefeated or unbeaten in Division Three with hockey history. And of course, Division One, the University of Minnesota Twin Cities Golden Gophers, 41 and 0 in their Division One championship back 10 years ago now. It's a tough feat to accomplish. River Falls trying to do it. But right now, all tied 1 1. You look at the last couple of games, too, and finding ways to overcome. We have a hooking call coming up here with 47.3 seconds left in the second period. For the first time, the penalty box door swings open for the Falcons. And to the box goes Holly Eckers. Eckers picks up this call. It's because of the hustle of Riva. She's able to draw. You can see the stick there. And I think if Eckers gets the stick out of the way, you don't get that penalty call. But with the official there right looking at it, I think if that stick's in the way, they're going to make that penalty call. you got to get the stick out of the way once a player loses the edge. And now power play time for Elmira. Elmira around 19% of the power play at 19 for 102. Against the Falcons, they've only given up four power play goals and 78 tries. Twenty seconds into the first soaring Eagles power play. Save made for Bobian. Look for McCallins. Rebound for Meter. And Meter will send it ahead. Galiniak across the blue line. Galiniak along the near wall. Final six seconds here in the second. Two out in front. That's going to be it for the second period. So still a minute 13 left in the first Elmira power play as we enter the third. But what a battle so far through two here at River Falls, Wisconsin. Well, and you and I had the conversation before the game started. You figured this was going to be scoreless or 1-1 after the second period. Sure enough, that's exactly what we have. Each of these teams with a good push, the major penalty, the big talking point so far in period number two. And now the question becomes this. You have a minute 13 of power play time for Elmira. How do you draw it up? How do you schedule it up? And if your River Falls, how do you defend against it? Certainly, again, you've been great at defending. You also know the shorthanded abilities as well. First in the WIAC this year, four shorthanded goals. It's going to be an interesting conclusion to this contest, whether it be in regulation or in extra time. In the history of this event, the 20 previous Division Three was Ice Hockey National Championship games. 12 have been decided by a single goal. Looks like this one may be headed that same direction. Tied at one after two. River Falls, Elmira. You're tuning to the 2024 NCAA Division Three Woods Ice Hockey Championship on NCAA.com. To the third period we go from a sold-out Hunt Arena, River Falls, Wisconsin, all even at one goal apiece for the national championship. Elmira and River Falls. River Falls able to strike first. A lengthy power play. And McKenna Ori 
giving the Falcons this one nothing advantage. And again, it's a great individual move for Ori on the power play separation. Elmira's aggressive, too aggressive in that moment, and that gives the Falcons a one nothing lead. That came 8.56 in off the five-minute major hitting from behind from Emily Lenzen, but Lenzen fresh from the penalty box with a shot, and then here's the rebound put back. That came out to Emma Bradbury, able to score her eighth of the season. That comes 10.36 in. Uh, assisted by Lenzen. This game is even at one so far. Shots are 29 to 13 in favor of the Falcons. And that a great shot by Bradbury to make the tying goal. But a puck that needed to be cleared out just a little bit further for River Falls. And now that's why we're here. 1-1. One, 1-13 one. One left in the first. Elmira power play. Holly Eckers got two minutes for hooking. 19-13 into the second. Here is Bradbury. Leave it back. On his near side, he had Sabrina Schwartzman. Angling in with meter. They're going to play it back out. Trying to go down a little reeve up. And back near the point with meter. Morton across reeve up. Off the back wall, looking to play it out. And again, not much developing here as the Soaring Eagles. Seeing some pressure in the corner. Meter. 25 seconds left in the power play. Trying to stuff it home, but another cover up here with O'Connor. You see thereafter, Schwartzman, number 19, a little bit last year. He played in 27 games this year. Trying to stuff it home, then you see the aftermath. The rush there by Meter, trying to go in, and you see O'Connor does a great job to hold on to it. And Players colliding, you know, Elmira going for the blue paint area, trying to get out in front. River Falls trying to defend it well. Combination back and forth doesn't result in the penalty there. 15 seconds left in the power play for Elmira. Bradbury getting tangled up in your picture and a clearance here for the Falcons. Hunky on the backhand. Great pass there from Carruthers. Looking for the sortie. Final seconds will tick away and back to five on five as the soaring will start 0 for 1. In this game of the power play. Face off through a couple of periods. 26 of 37 for the Falcons. So they've had some great puck possession. It's dumped down low by Nelvin. Individually through two periods. Good roll with seven shots. Six taken by Ori. They've been the top shot getters. Olsen on that back wall. Played on the near side. Waiting back for the Falcons is Caitlin Ron. Far corner with Sophie Campo. Helping out Meter. Campo. Olsen there for the Falcons. We'll take it away. Put it down low, looking out in front. Nothing there. Ron. Pressure on the backside from Meter. Back out to Olsen. But traffic in front, you had Hoffman in front for Elmira. Olsen gets bucked into the wall. Bryce, Olsen, just outside this near circle. Rod gives it a ride. That got redirected. Olsen looking for the rebound. Brought in here by Catterlick. Sather's waiting back. Olsen. Out of the backside again comes Meter. Sather's. From the left point, goes wide. Out of the ice is Ori. Goes after the rebound. Ori, she skates around. Goes back to the forehand. Will fire the puck it off a knee. And for Elmira, through center. Guided ahead off the stick of Campo. Up this right side for Kenzie Dunn. Gets across the blue line. Down she goes. Riva was there for Elmira. To the outside with Bradbury. Right back through center. With 16.38 to go here in the third. So two fantastic semifinals on Friday. And this one certainly living up to what has been a fantastic weekend here at River Falls, Wisconsin. And you could tell how important that power play was for Elmira to start this period. And they're going back and forth now. But River Falls immediately after that power play as they should have one there again with the interference minor that will be assessed to Holly Eckers. Bradbury getting knocked down. 3.45, the time of the 
call here against Eckers for interference. So she's in the box for a second time, second power play for the Soaring Eagles. And it's not so much that she knocks her down. It's not that first instance, but on this exit out of the zone where she extends out once the puck is out of the vicinity of the player for Elmira who's right on it. And so now that first power play, huge for Elmira, and the kill by River Falls to keep it 1-1. Here again, significant. A penalty kill needed once more for the Falcons. But can they take advantage? You can make the argument that in the first power play for Elmira, it was the Falcons with the better of the scoring chance. Hoffman in front, O'Connor with the save. MK Boyle with the look. Exactly four minutes left here in the third. 145 left in the power play. And that's what we talked about as well in the late stages of the second period. How good of a team at scoring shorthanded goals, River Falls is four goals into this one here where they have a shorthanded tally this season. Looking for another one to be their first since early February. Look at it front for Tool. Ori. Back out there for Elmira with Emily Lenzin. As Lenzen goes down, we have a penalty coming up here against Ori. It's going to be five on three. There's still 90 seconds left in the Eckers interference call. And Ori comes to the bench shaking her head. She's frustrated. It's a roughing minor that will be called at 4.15. Sets up a minute 30. And if I'm Elmira, I don't, I think about taking a time out here. And you see the stick to the head. That's what draws a penalty call there. And then the extra bit on the end there to necessitate the roughing call that's called there and so as a result I thought it was going to be the River Falls power play that would be a deciding fact in this game well now it's a penalty kill having to kill a minute and 30 of five on three time 4.15 the time of the penalty is pass comes across for Reva Reva right back from Morton knocked away Reva had the chance 15.25 to go here in the third. Morton chasing after it. The puck's off the back of the cage. Morton takes away, leaves it in front. Nobody there, and a clearance for the Falcons. <laughs> left here for Meter. There's 52 seconds left on the first penalty against Eckers. Still a minute 18 left for Ori. As Meter gets knocked out, she gets back up. We're talking about that physicality throughout. Hoffman. Trying to squeeze through, goes back down low. Has meter out atop this near circle. The Collins and a clearance for the Falcons. A line change here for River Falls. Galiniak. Back out. Off the turn, played out by Lenzin. Morton right back with Lenzin, right back Morton. But teed up and still a pass off Tool. The fuck off a skate. That was off Carruthers skate. Still battling in the corner with Lenzin. And the Falcons dump it down ice. There's 20 seconds left on the Ori call. Already Eckers has been released. 13.55 to go. Tool wide. Final five seconds. So it was a five on three for close to 90 seconds. Back to full strength. Game still tied at one. Massive penalty kill for Wisconsin River Falls. Elmira got plenty of great looks on it. In fact, Elmira's won every faceoff this period so far. And a great penalty kill with great clearances for the Falcons. With the speed of Goodrow. Totally what she's been able to do so far through a couple of periods. The opportunities have been there. Kenzie Dunn. Of course, we saw this Falcon team with their backs against the wall on Friday come up with a strong third period. Looking for a strong third period here, and Kenzie Dunn scores! The time of the goal. Kenzie Dunn getting it done. It's a 2 1 Falcons lead.
Speed and skating beats physicality every time. Dunn avoids all of them and finds it five hole underneath the leg pads of Chloe Bobian. And again, not her fault there, just the Elmira defense that didn't close her out as they had on previous rushes. And a great way for Dunn to be able to put them ahead. Kenzie Dunn coming through with her third goal. They will score back on March 2nd as well, which came in the WIC O'Brien Cup Championship against Eau Claire in overtime. So the game order 6-0-3 in the OT for the, the O'Brien Cup title. The fifth straight for the Falcons, ninth out of the 11 all time. And when she scored that goal, after Kenzie Dunn was her first since January 6th against Concordia Moorhead. So she has come through with some mighty big goals in the last couple of weeks. And as it stands right now, this one's this one's the biggest in not just the, the season or the weekend, but in the program history for Wisconsin River Falls as it stands right now. The slap shot for Ron. Score! into this third period some traffic in front and a 3-1 Falcons lead you see teed up by Caitlin Ron and I'm still trying to figure out who that hits off of in front going through the line first it was Laverne Madison who went Laverne. through it first as it tipped off of her and those shots that in the first and second period weren't getting through to the goaltender with much difficulty. Well, there's a crazy bounce that gives them now a 3-1 lead. Caitlin Ron. Caitlin Ron gets the assist. Madison Laverne able to finish it off. With that deflection, she has now scored goals in three consecutive games. And he wondered if River Falls was going to get one here in the second period. Would the floodgates open a little bit? Well, two goals in pretty quick succession. Tends to give us an answer for that one. But Elmira, now, how do they respond? How do they bounce back? 12 minutes left. You've got to think about when do you pull your goaltender? How do you start getting more bodies to the front of the net as they did on Friday against Middlebury? They have to do the same thing again to have a hope here. And now even the physicality is favoring River Falls. Look at attack on Moore. Certainly a rare spot here for the Soaring Eagles. The first time they've given up. Multiple goals in the game since their last loss, which came against Castleton on February the 10th in a 2 0 setback. Taking a step further, it's the first time they've allowed three or more goals in the game since a 4 2 loss to Hamilton on the 9th of January. So, certainly as of late, foreign territory for the Soaring Eagles. Put off the near wall by Manning. Reva. It's across center, Reva. Knocked into the Falcon zone. So two third period goals mentioned before the Kenzie Dunn goal. The Falcons produced a very strong third period Friday. Another strong third period so far in this national championship game. And in this case, Kenzie Dunn with the, the go-ahead goal. And some insurance from Madison Laverne. We've now scored 10 times on the season and 24 times over the last couple of seasons. You know, it's cliche to say here, but with 11-11 left in the third, next goal is huge. Whether it's Elmira to get momentum back on their side or River Falls truly to put it away. Whoever pots that next one, well, they're going to be feeling pretty good about where they sit. Manning battling with Olsen, meter. Olsen comes out with it. Oster handles who's looking for the wraparound. Back out of the point is Holly Eckers. And the Soaring Eagles look up this near side. Off the connection to Claire Meter. Meter fires off the glove of O'Connor. Looking for the rebound, it comes back out. That slap shot goes wide. Got a bad look on that second chance for Maddie Morton. Eckers battling near side. Morton skates back. Able to get around oncoming Anna Lugi. Gets by the stick of Chloe Bobian. Shots are at 36 to 15 in favor of the Falcons. And it was a 29 to 13 differential through two. 
Near the halfway point here in this third. Schmidt has Tool in front. Schmidt was blocked, Schmidt again. On coming was Campo. Ricochets to the near side. And set head by Nelvin. On by the stick of Campo. Schmidt, we're gonna play it off the back wall. Sathers. Now McCarrick against McCollins. That was kept in by Sathers. Get right back to the Soaring Eagles. Toward the corner went Manny. Got to take it away. Now a chance here for the Falcons in front. Got a game positioning. Tough to do so there. Yeah, Kenzie Dunn doing all she could. Lugie. Will lift it. Back through center. Drag along the near wall. Reeve up. Pass the reach of Lugie. And I think this is the point where, for Elmira, they got to have their leading scorers start stepping up. You might see Goliniak, Meter, and Schmidt on the ice. For the eight and a half that's left, you might see them on the ice for the next six minutes, but you need those leaders to start stepping up and making a play. Olsen plays off the right wing boards. Back out with it with Morton. Take it off first stick. That was swiped away by Madison Laverne. Well, back left wing by Lemson. Hunky. Back wall with Anna Lugi. Morton a little more force will zip it down ice. O'Connor will leave it here for Eckers. Off the tip by Nelvin. Here's a chance. Score! Alex Hunky! At 12.01 to the third period, Alex Funky makes it 4 1 Falcons. And Elmira has to take their time out. It's a great play by Hunky with the skate to keep it on side. And blocker high side again rips it over the goaltender, Bobby. And the next goal was going to be pivotal. It was next going to be critical. This might be the one that does it for River Falls. This game might be over. That for Hunky, her 50th career goal. This her 99th career game. And a timeout for Elmira. The Falcons have scored three unanswered here in the third. They have taken a 4-1 lead in search of their first D3 Woods Hockey National Championship. They have outshot the Soaring Eagles 37-16. Well, now it's only going to be four to tie and five to win if you're Elmira. So for River Falls, the message is simple. Possession. Keep skating through neutral ice and control what you can control as much as you can. They're too deep here. That crowd's going to be a big factor for the next eight minutes. Not to mention, for we understand, for those that could not get inside the Hunt Arena, they're across the hall in the basketball gym watching on the big screen. There might have to be some days off tomorrow in River Falls if this result holds. Sathers. Out of the Elmira timeout. Alex Funky has now recorded points in 26 of 31 games played this season. After she came through with an, uh, uh, Hunky came through with an assist in the semifinal on Friday. But again, this is a great example of what this Falcons team has done all year. Pick your poison. They've had four different goal scorers in this championship game. They've had 20 different goal scorers, 22 point getters throughout the course of the campaign. And especially here in the postseason where the question has been, how do you how do you battle, how do you respond as that puck goes out of glass while the faceoff with 722 left to go? You have that question about how do you respond, how do you step up in these big moments? They did so in the round to get to the Frozen Four and host the Frozen Four against Gustavus Adolphus. They did so against Adrian on Friday, and now here they are again, another big third period to give them this 4-1 lead. Great teams win when it matters. They do so in the third period. River Falls, all that today. Tool trying to kick the face off against McCollins. Out with it with 
Foul on the pass with his right side. See some of that crowd in your picture. It's not a spot to be had here inside Hunt Arena. They're in the aisles and beyond. Put off the near wall by McCarrick. Ori McCarrick. Tool. Waiting for it. Back at the point is Morton. Off the right wing boards. Another takeaway for the Falcons. Schmidt. Down she goes. Puck back to center. Get knocked out to Madison Catterlick. Ellie Bryce. And brought in here by Bobian. 6.32 to go. As the Falcons try to make some history and becomes the second Division III women's ice hockey team. Run the table and be undefeated. The third if you include the unbeaten Plattsburgh State team that had a couple of ties going 27-0 and two. Certainly nothing to, to sneeze about back in 2007. Hunky. Lens in. Just knocked down ice. Tracked down down by Ron. Hearing six minutes left here in the third. Just joining us, it was 1-1 after two. But all Falcons here in the third period, they have produced nine shots. They've allowed just three. Hunky, one of the goal scorers, dumps it into the corner. And a line change here for River Falls. Besides a couple of D3 programs on the women's side that have either gone undefeated or unbeaten. You mentioned the Minnesota Golden Gophers went 41-0-0 in 2013. On the men's side, a couple of programs have gone undefeated or unbeaten with Cornell going 29-0 back in 1969-70. And then Stevens Point, the 2018-19 campaign, they went 29-0-2. On their home ice, they won the national championship over Norwich. McCollins with the empty net will set it down ice, but wide. And I think that's the right time where you have to pull the goaltender now for Elmira. You have to start getting that extra attacker, getting that extra skater on. You got some good looks in the power plays you've had, and well, now it's desperation time. High shot for Riva. Back into the corner, thanks to Kaliniak. Put off the near side wall, Olsen. And Bryce applying pressure. Put off the right wing boards. Give it right back. Overcame Schmidt to the near side. Hoffman. But just again, you see the speed. Swarming toward the puck. The Falcons are. Making life miserable for the Soaring Eagles right now. Sathers. Lemson. Olsen. Right back through center. They have a trip. No, we're going to have a hand pass. Let's say we saw the trip up here near center. But a hand pass will stop play with 40 11 to go here in the third. The Falcons also trying to become the 12th school that has hosted the national championship game in Division Three with hockey to ultimately win the national championship. Logistically, that's something that happens where you have to have the high seed host that sure. Division Three championship game. And so you get those comforts of home, the familiarity of your home rank. And it might be a neutral site in name, but it's neutral site in name only. They just announced the attendance here. 1780 for a building that has a capacity of 1400. And even that might be an understatement in the attendance as well. They're packed in here like sardines. But Middlebury was the last team to host and win the national championship in 2022. With 3.56 to go, River Falls is that amount of time away from becoming the eighth school in the history of this event. This being the 21st Division Three Women's Ice Hockey National Championship to win the title. Of course, COVID canceling the 2020-2021 championships. Hunky. And that one taken by Nelvin. With Bobian back out there. Hoffman. 
Out in front for the Falcons with Laverne. And Elmira plays it short. Following the weave, dump back in. Off Bradbury. Of course, here the goal that tied this game up once upon a time at one in that second period. McCollins trying to get a piece of it. Here's out with Eckerts. McCollins along the back wall. Eckers, McCollins. You have good row out there. Under three minutes to go. We saw at one point the extra skater on for a minute or so, but Bobian has been back since, since that hand pass. That come across the way. Three backhanded in by Bell. And you're at the point here, too, where River Falls keeps having that possession. So even if they can try to pull Bobby in, they haven't been able to because River Falls has had possession in the attacking zone now for two straight minutes. 2.22 away from a 31-0 season. But one of the ultimate prize that you trade for all year, that national championship trophy, that national championship title. Right back to center with a couple minutes remaining. McCarrick coming to your side. Right back to Kennedy, Bielenberg, Howarth. Deleniak. That was 150 to go. A penalty coming up here against the Soaring Eagles. It's going to be an elbowing. elbowing. Yep. Elbow call here and a penalty of frustration more than anything. That'll effectively, fortunately for Elmira, fortunately for River Falls, that'll end it here. Another power play chance for Wisconsin River Falls. And when they needed to most, give Wisconsin River Falls credit, they scored the goals that they had to. Of all the games that they scored four or more goals this season, over 60% of those games have been against non-conference opposition. And they did so again here today. Erica Kaliniak, guilty the elbow. Well, the Falcons will set it ahead. Be honest, stick and Nelvin. Overcomes Caitlin Ron. Has Eckers near side. Instead will lead it. Nelvin on back with Hunky. Eckers. 115 to go. But a three-goal third period for the Falcons to take control of this national championship game. We have seen Dunn, we have seen Laverne, we have seen Hunky score goals for River Falls. That in this third after it was McKenna Ori who started the scoring in this championship game back in the second period for the Falcons. With 54 seconds left on the power play, final 42 seconds here in the third. Just skating around with the puck. Eckers along the near side. Fans on their feet inside Hunt Arena. One more save for Bobby in. Final 22 seconds. Going back to Eckers at center. Final 12 seconds. Final five. Eckers will pass it off. An undefeated season. The River Falls Falcons. Your 2024 NCAA Division III Women's Ice Hockey National Champions.
A perfect season for the Falcons who finished off this 2023-24 season 31-0. It's a record that might not be caught for quite some time. A great team, great season. Tested when it mattered the most against Gustavus. On Friday against Adrian, and now today against Elmira. A 1-1 battle after two periods of play, but great teams able to pull away, able to create separation, and it was great puck movement, situational awareness that allowed River Falls to take advantage and pull away with a 4-1 win. And think about Friday. Backs against the wall, down 2-1 after two. They find a way. First, it's McCallens who ties the game before they eventually score the game winner to get to this championship game. Well, and again, it's... Hockey games are decided in moments. It's a 60-minute game, but it's that five-minute interval here and there that has such a big impact. You can go back and, you know, butterfly effect the whole thing where you say, oh, if this happens, if this happens, it, it is what it is. But this is a team in Wisconsin River Falls. It just felt like even all the way back in November and December covering them when they played MIAC teams, it just felt like a team that was destined for greatness. They had to get past Gustavus, and you know that that was the one team that once they were able to get past Gustavus, especially in St. Peter, that you figured this team has a chance to win a national championship. They did not lose again. And as a result, well, there's going to be a new banner here at Hunt Arena. Bailey Olsen had the game winner on Friday. Today, it's Kenzie Dunn, her second game winner of the year. And how about the fact that she's had both game winners come in the month of March? It's not a... <laughs> You talk about getting the goal that comes your way at the most opportune time. That is exactly what she did. And now, again, national champion has a nice ring to it for her. You want to be able to score those goals in those big moments. That's exactly what she did. And this is a team, again, for Wisconsin River Falls that you figure as they look into it again, they'll re up for next season. Next season, of course, starts tomorrow. They'll enjoy this one here today on St. Patrick's Day. But River Falls, again, just a team of destiny that did some really great things here this weekend. Three goals all year for Kenzie Dunn. Getting it done. The Falcons get it done. Their second ever national championship game appearance. Their first national championship. A three-goal third period to finish off a 31-0 season. Joining the likes of Middlebury is the only two Division Three women's hockey programs to go undefeated. Joining Plattsburgh State, who went unbeaten in 2006 Oh, seven to the Minnesota, another team in women's hockey that went 41-0 in 2012-13 to go undefeated. That's it. It's a small collection. It's hard to do. This Falcon team back against the wall a couple of different times. We go back to that, that WIC O'Brien Cup championship game. They were down to that game. Eventually won it in overtime. You've talked about it in the past. That bounce of the puck. And it bounced the Falcons' direction more times than not here this season. And especially here in this game here today where, you know, just individual plays, great plays that they read, they were able to do so. And you can even take it a step further. Think about the pairwise rankings, right? Where if University of Wisconsin River Falls loses that O'Brien Cup, the WIAC doesn't have an automatic bid. And you could make the argument that maybe the numbers don't work and they're not playing at all in the month of March. But good teams win when they have to. And again, you got to give credit to Elmira. They had a great season. They played extremely well here today. But eventually, I said it when it happened, one goal is scored. The floodgates open for River Falls. Well, that's all that it took. But offense was able to produce 160 goals this season. That's for the Falcons. Elmira, a runner-up for the fifth time in eight championship game. Appearances their season over at 23, 8, and 1, despite some great saves made again by Chloe Bobian, the grad student, the transfer from Plattsburgh State. And it's going to be something where you look at Elmira next season in the NEHC, again, one of the better conferences in Division Three college hockey. You figure they still have enough in the tank, and they certainly have the depth to be able to contend in that. They hope to be back here again next year. It's a team that has been one of Division Three women's hockey's best for the entire duration of it. And so you figure Elmira, while it might sting now, it's still a pretty good team top to bottom, whether it be the forwards who do a great job moving the puck in the attacking zone, the defenders who defend their crease and allow their goaltender to make root routine easy saves more times than not. Elmira's going to be back here next year, and you certainly figure whether wherever the Frozen Four is held next year that they'll be able to be in part of that conversation. National championship hats for the victorious River Falls Falcons. Over 1,700 fans here inside Hunt Arena. Who knows how many outside the ice arena itself to take in the atmosphere, to be a part of this national championship game. But what a weekend it has been here in River Falls, Wisconsin. And capped off by a perfect season for the WIAC's River Falls Falcons as we wrap up our 
play-by-play coverage of this national championship game. Again, the Falcons knock off Elmira 4-1. Thanks to Alex Westad, our entire crew, stay tuned. The award ceremony about to take place. Met Mills St. Saul from Hunts Arena as the River Falls Falcons here at 2024 NCAA Division III with Ice Hockey National Champion. Sophomore Peyton Nixon. Number nine, Junior Katie Manning. Number ten, and Junior Erica Galiniak. Junior Mackenzie Schmidt. Number 13, sophomore Piper Andrews. Number 14, graduate Claire Meter. Number 15, senior Lexi Hoffman. Number 16, sophomore Mandy McCarrick.
Number 18, senior Maddie Morton. Number 19, junior Sabrina Schwartzman. Number 20, graduate Holly Riva. Number 21, freshman Anna Lukey. Number 22, junior Sophie Campo. Number 23, freshman Bree Conger. Number 24, sophomore Sophie Gregory. Number 25, sophomore M.K. Boyle. Number 26, sophomore Emma Bradbury. Number 27, graduate Kelly Millens. Freshman Shira Wine. Number 33, graduate Chloe Bobian. Number 37, freshman Lydia Walsh. Assistant Coach Bree Simon. <laughs> Assistant Coach Aaron Guillen. <laughs> and now will Head Coach and Maddie Morton and Claire Meter come forward to accept your treat team trophy. Congratulations to Elmira College on a great season. Let's give all of these outstanding student athletes, coaches and staff a round of applause. And now, the 2024 NCAA Division III Women's Ice Hockey National Champion, finishing with a record of 31 University of Wisconsin River Falls Falcons. <laughs> Starting with team managers on the individual awards. Team manager Jenna Caspers. <laughs> team, man team manager Trinity Foster. Team manager, Chalice Brohaska. And athletic trainer, Sean Peterson. Will the following players please come forward to receive your award, starting with number one sophomore, Jordan O'Kane. Number two, senior, Alex Hunky. Number three, freshman Madison Catterlick. Number four, senior Holly Eckers. Number five, junior Kenzie Dunn. Number six, senior Aubrey Nelvin. Number eight, junior Allison Carruthers. 
Number nine, Junior Bailey Olson. Number ten, sophomore Megan Goodrow. Number eleven, sophomore Caitlin Ron. Number twelve, freshman Kennedy Bielenberg Howard. Number 13, Junior Ellie Bryce. Number 14, Sophomore Madison Laverne. Number 15, Sophomore Catherine Bell. Number 16, fifth year senior Maddie McCollin. Number 17, sophomore McKenna Ori. Number 18, freshman McKenna Catterlin. Number 19, freshman Courtney Jacobs. Number 20, freshman Kalia Lindquist. Number 22, sophomore Kaylee Nicko. Number 24, freshman Peyton Hickson. Number 25, senior Braylon Sathers. Number 30, senior Jordan O'Connor. Number 21, Junior Brooke Lemke. Number 33, freshman Anna Rayner. Head coach Joe Cranston. Assistant Coach Amanda Ryder. Assistant Coach Jeremy Weiss. And now will Head Coach Joe Cranston, Alex Hunky, Holly Eckers, and Maddie McCollins please come forward to receive your 2024 NCAA Division win three women's ice hockey national championship trophy. Fans, congratulations to the University of Wisconsin and Wisconsin Falls, your 2024.